At SEND, we affirm the idea that we must first be disciples and then make disciples. Now, some may ask me, Mags, you work for a mission agency. Doesn't your organization simply want to recruit and send out as many workers as possible? Actually, no, we don't. As important as it is to send out workers for short and medium and long-term service, we seek to first ensure that every member of our community is a growing disciple of Christ. We seek to encourage and facilitate genuine and ongoing relationships with Jesus, both before people serve and during any term of service. So what does a 21st century disciple look like, and how do we become one of those people? In a recent blog post, a colleague of mine, Lynn, offered a helpful definition. This is what she wrote. A disciple is one who hears and responds positively to the call of salvation in Jesus and chooses to keep company with Jesus in order to learn what he teaches, obey his commands, and help make other disciples for Jesus. I like this definition. It gives us plenty to think about. First, have we repented of our sins and made an initial commitment to the Lordship of Jesus? And then in an ongoing sense, are we spending time with him and getting to know him? And is that leading to us increasingly learning and increasingly obeying and then increasingly helping to make new disciples? At this point, some may ask, how can I really get to know Jesus and be his disciple? Well, Lynn also wrote this. We learn about Jesus from others who know him. Now, this includes the writers of the New Testament who knew Jesus personally and have given us God's word. We need to be in God's word. Discipleship also means learning from those who are walking with Jesus today. If I could visit with you personally right now, probably you would have one or two faithful people come to mind. You know they walk with Jesus and perhaps they could be of help to you. In other words, perhaps they could disciple you. Of course, a video like this is far too brief to propose any comprehensive plan for discipleship. But let me offer just three questions to determine if you're on the right track and maybe identify some next steps. Number one, who or what are you devoted to? What is absolutely essential in your life and what's optional? What are you willing even to die for? The honest answer to these questions will help you understand your core priorities and if you're on the path of self-satisfaction or on the narrower path of discipleship. Number two, whose disciple are you? One writer that I appreciate said it this way, everyone is a disciple. Whose disciple are you? Who or what is shaping your mind and your thinking? Who or what is shaping your innermost heart? And are you willing to reconsider those inputs if you discern that they are not God-honoring? And number three, am I really willing to lay down my life and follow Jesus? This is a Lordship question, really. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you really do want to please God with your life. So what are the steps that you need to take to make sure you're getting traction on that? Who are the people that you need to bring into your life to help you along the way? I strongly encourage you, when you identify that person, to reach out to them and ask them to walk along with you. Write a text, make a call, and ask them to help you walk with Jesus, the one who calls you to lay down your life so that you can live life abundantly. Well, I hope you'll take some time with these questions. Maybe jog back in the video for review. And I really hope you'll take some time to reflect together with someone you can trust and who can walk with you. Some of us need to get onto this discipleship path. Some of us need to get back on this discipleship path. And all of us, with God's help and with others around us, need to strive forward to be faithful disciples of Christ. Be disciples, make disciples. Thanks for watching.